Film photography and videography has always been an interesting subject for me. Through candid shots and spontaneous moments, street photography offers a raw and authentic glimpse into the world around us. It is a way of telling stories through images and has been around since the 19th century. The first examples came from French photographer Charles Negre in the 1850s as he captured architecture, laborers, traveling musicians and unique street characters. Later, photographers like Henry Cartier-Bresson, Vivian Meyer and Robert Frank helped shape this genre. As a result, I created this tutorial inspired by this genre and in today's video we are going to take a look at how to create this urban style street look in DaVinci Resolve. Let's start right away. I've added various city footage to my timeline, shot on different days and under different weather conditions. I've also gathered some reference images from the internet. I grouped the ones that have a similar look. As we build our look, we are going to use these images for reference. Now let's jump to the color page. Okay, I want to keep my note tree as simple as possible. First, let's select our reference clips. I like the way these images look. So we need to analyze them first. To better understand the color palette of an image, you can use DaVinci Resolve's color palette tool by applying it to an empty node. This will break down the image into shadows, mid-tones and highlight colors. However, this tool doesn't work correctly here because the image is vertical while my timeline is in a horizontal resolution. So here's what I'm going to do. I will go to the media pool, right click on the timeline and select duplicate timeline. Then I will go into timeline settings, uncheck this box and switch the resolution to vertical. After clicking OK, I now have a duplicated timeline in a vertical format. Now when I switch back to the color page and apply the color palette effect to an empty node, it works correctly. So in short, I wasn't able to properly analyze the colors of a vertical image in a horizontal timeline, but switching to a vertical timeline solved this issue. Anyway, I thought this would be a useful little tip to share. Okay, one more important thing, as always in my project settings, my timeline color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and my output color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I will be working within DaVinci White Gamut color space to build this look. Now looking at this reference photo, I assume it was shot on an analog film camera. The contrast, color depth and overall richness are quite strong. The image also has a distinct texture, it's a bit soft and you can feel the grain. If you analyze the shadows, we see deep blacks, but they don't feel super harsh. The midtones have a subtle tealish cast, while the overall palette leans towards warm, golden and neutral tones. In the highlights, we can see pure whites and the blues appear in soft pastel shades. I think it's a beautiful color palette. Let's also take a look at the scopes. As you can see, the levels are pushed quite high and low, leaning slightly towards the warmer side of the spectrum. Okay, now I will use this reference to create a similar aesthetic for my footage. Let's switch back to our horizontal timeline. The first step, of course, is to transform our footage from Log to Rec. 709 using Color Space Transform, which is CST. I will apply the CST to the first node for input color space, since this is a Sony footage. I will select Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and for input gamma I will select S Log 3. The output color space will be DaVinci White Gamut and the output gamma will be DaVinci Intermediate. Next I will apply another CST to the final node. Here the input color space is DaVinci White Gamut and the input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. The output color space is Rec. 709 and the output gamma is Gamma 2.4. With this we have successfully converted the footage from Log to Rec. 709. I'm going to make all the adjustments between these two nodes. As I mentioned earlier, I want to keep the node tree as simple as possible. Let's add two nodes, one for exposure and the other for contrast. After that, I will add secondary nodes. I will label the first one log wheels and for the second, I will name it curves. This is where I'm going to make adjustments to the density of the colors. I will also add another node for hue adjustments. Next, I will add two more nodes. We can name this one Adjust. This will be our look node. And lastly, this node will handle the effects like halation and grain using the Film Look Creator tool. So, to begin creating our look, I'm going to click on split screen icon right above the viewer. I will select selected clips from the drop down menu here, then hold Ctrl and select my reference clip from clip list below. I want to compare these images using 
the scopes. For the exposure adjustments, I will just pull the shadows down a bit, something like this. By the way, to clarify, this section represents the second image. This section represents the first image, which is the reference. And the first section is my own footage. Now, looking at the highlights again, we can slightly increase the gamma levels. After that, I will increase the gain slightly as well. These are simple, subtle adjustments. Okay, we can move on to the contrast node. I've deliberately avoided adding a white balance node because with street photography or video, the weather can be highly variable. Achieving perfect white balance for every clip isn't practical. Therefore, I will focus only on building the look. On the contrast node, I will use custom curves. Let's enable editable splines. First, I want to raise the highlights slightly as our reference image has prominent highlights. I will pull this point down to maintain consistency across levels. Let's do the same for the shadows. To avoid crashing the blacks too much, I will raise the lowest point slightly. The midtones aren't overly dark, so I want to avoid pushing them into the shadows. I raised the highlight point a bit more to achieve this balance. This is before and this is after. Okay, it's a solid start. I think we are in a good spot with just these two simple notes. Now let's make some adjustments to the saturation. First, I will go to the curves panel and select saturation versus luminance. I will lift the point in the shadow region slightly. Alternatively, I can create a point here to deepen the blacks. Lowering the highlight points add a bit more depth to the colors, just a slight amount. Then I will switch to the luminous versus saturation. And here I'm going to increase the midtones just a tiny bit. Okay, that looks good. I will come back to the log wheels later. For now, I want to move straight to the look node and start shaping the overall tone. All right, looking at the vector scope, I can see that the reference image is dominant by yellow and golden tones. In the primaries panel, I will push the gamma wheel towards yellow. First, pushing it more than needed and then gradually dialing it back. Then I will slightly push lift in the opposite direction. This is before and this is after. That's looking good. I might also reduce the reds a little. Yeah, that's definitely better. Next, I will go back to the exposure node and increase the contrast slightly. I will adjust the pivot to fine tune the balance because in the reference image, the black and white levels are quite striking. Now I will move on to the log node and switch to log wheels in the primaries panel. Here, I'm going to specifically focus on aligning the highlights, midtones and shadows. For example, in the reference image, the blue channel in the shadows is lower, but in my image, it's a bit higher. I will bring it down to match. Now, let's check the greens. In the reference image, green sits slightly higher, while the reds are lower. This is before and this is after. Do you see that? It's a very minimal change, but it makes a significant impact. Next, I will apply the same adjustments to the highlights. In my image, the blue highlights are stronger, so I'm going to pull them down. I will also reduce the green slightly and drop the reds a little as well. At this point, I'm barely looking at the image itself. I'm working purely based on scopes. As a result, we achieve a much more stylized tone. Now, after these changes, I can use the midtones to balance out the more extreme adjustments I made. By cooling down the midtones slightly, I can bring everything back to looking a little bit normal. Okay, let's move forward. Now in the adjust node, I want to show a small trick. Right click on the node, change the composite mode to soft light. This will darken the image and increase the contrast, but we are going to contract that. Next, go to the blur tab and increase the blur almost to the maximum. Then in the key menu, reduce the gain of the adjust node. I will keep this at a very low level. This adds a subtle softening effect to our image, giving it a smoother and more refined look. Now let's move on to the Film Look Creator node. I believe this will be one of the most significant changes in our grade. I will open the effects panel and locate Film Look Creator and apply it to a node. By default, it applies a 65mm look, but I won't be using that. I will start with a clean slate instead. Okay, there are a few elements I want to enable. Halation, grain, and the split tone. I will also add a slight amount of film look blend. The image might look a bit exaggerated at this stage, but that's fine. We can always dial it back. First, I will reduce the halation. 
it's noticeable in these areas. I will lower the saturation of the halation so it doesn't overly influence the colors. For grain, I'm using a 35mm setting. I also like applying a bit of image defocus to add to the filmic quality. I will reduce softness and keep the amount low, just enough to create a subtle texture without overpowering the image. Now I will move on to the split tone, which will introduce a beautiful color separation in the image. To see its full effect, I will first push it to the maximum. This helps visualize the adjustment. Once I understand how it behaves, I will fine tune it. For the hue angle, I want a slightly warm tint in the highlights. Just a subtle touch. I will set the amount somewhere around here. Because of the film look effect, the image might have become slightly desaturated. I can adjust the saturation settings here or even pull back the contrast a tiny bit if needed. This is before and this is after. Do you see how it started to take on that filmic feel? It now looks like they belong in the same world. Of course, this process requires going back and forth between nodes. For example, if an adjustment in the film creator feels too strong, I might return to the log wheels and refine it. If the yellows are too intense, I can tweak the midtone slightly. Small refinements like these help match the reference more accurately. And I think even at this stage, the transformation is impressive. Let me show you a quick comparison. This was just our Rec. 709 conversion. And this is the stylized version we just created. Slightly exaggerated, but I would say we have achieved a cool cinematic look. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, it works. Now let's go to the hue node and check the hue shifts. I actually want to adjust the blue hues a little. In this image, it might not make an impact since blue only appears in this sign, but in other shots, with more blue tones, this adjustment would be much more noticeable. Now let's see how this look holds up in the new shot. Honestly, I think it's starting to resemble Kodak LUTs. We are getting so close to those golden yellow tones. Overall, I'm happy with this result. All right, I highly recommend practicing this look on your own footage. There are countless ways to create a film look in DaVinci Resolve, and this was just one of them. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.